Welcome back to my channel, fellow gardeners. Today I want to introduce a plant. It's a euphobia. Now it's this plant. I've been looking at it and you know, there are certain plants that you, you do have them in your garden and you don't really feel very attached to it until I went to visit a friend and she had them in hanging baskets. <laughs> they looked like white round balls. And then suddenly I thought, oh yes, I have one in my garden. And so let's talk about it because I'm so into this plant at the moment. Now this plant is called a diamond frost or a diamond snow, or they call it baby breath or a uh, graceful spurge. Here in Kenya, when I go to the nurseries, they call it the snow of Mount Kilimanjaro. So it is a lovely plant and look at that. It's so airy, it's so fresh and you can have them in hanging baskets or plant them as mass in a garden or just even have them indoors for as long as you put it close to the window and it gets enough sun because it is a euphorbia. So welcome back to my channel. My name is Alice and I'm the Red Soul Gardener. Now, basically this plant, my euphobia or my diamond frost, diamond snow, um, baby breath, I just love it. But when you do work with it, because it is a euphobia and it is a milk plant, milky plant. So anytime you do make a propagation is you will get this white liquid coming out. And this is quite an irritant. So whenever you do work with euphobias, do wear your gloves. It just stop you getting a skin irritation. Now, the thing about this plant is that there's so many different varieties. There's so many different hybrids and some people, some um, people do require that you do get a license if you're propagating and for selling purposes. But here, as we're doing it for our own gardens, it is OK. Now, as I said, this plant, although they do, they do call it the baby breath or the, the graceful spurge, is because of its leaves. It's all about its leaves, its flowers, and you get this lovely snow white, very delicate snow white flowers. And you do get varieties that are airy as this one, and you do get some which are more compact or double flowered, or you do get ones which are really dense. But this is the variety that we have in Kenya. But they're all the same and propagation is exactly the same. Now, what you do with it is, first of all, once you do have your plant, it is a euphorbia, so it does like full sun, although it can work in partial sun. Now, the thing is, is that if it's too shaded, you will get, if I may show you, is, if I just take that, is you will get that between the nodes, it gets longer and lankier and you don't want that. So full sun does work really well. In really, really hot climates where you do get um, uh, intense sun, I would actually move it into partial sun. Now, what sort of soil does it want? Actually, with euphobias, the thing about euphobias is that they do like well-draining soil, and I must emphasize that, because the problem is that if you do um, have a soil that is compact and it doesn't drain through, you will get root rot. And also, if the water sits around its roof, you could have a fungal disease. So just make sure that you do get a really nice, well-drained soil. If it's clay, do put in a bit of compost to help with the drainage. But other than that, it's good to go. So what you need to do is space your watering, make sure the soil is dry, and then water. Now, the beauty about this particular plant and why people love it is basically it flowers all the time. And these flowers are not actually flowers, they're actually bracts, because the flower is a tiny little flower that is in between. But apart from that, as it does develop this lovely snow white look, is it flowers 
all year around. The other thing is that you can have it as an indoor plant, but do put it in a sunny spot because you don't want the plant to look for the sun and get lanky. Now the average height for my, um, for my uh, diamond frost is actually it goes to about 12 inches or 20 inches, but it is quite, um, it does grow in a mound and the width does get wider, but I think it is a lovely plant to have. Once it starts growing from spring, it actually does continue blooming until just before the first frost in fall. So once you do have them outside in containers and you need to bring them inside the house, know that from spring right up to autumn is you will continue getting blooms. And as I said, do overwinter them inside the house. Euphobias don't like, they're not that hardy to actually survive uh, a freeze temperature. Now, the thing about these lovely um, plants is, first of all, they do grow in a mound, and so you don't need to deadhead it. It may go a bit outwards in terms of width, but basically it does stay about 20, well, this one, about 12 inches, maybe 20, because I did propagate this one. But as it gets older, as the one we started off with, it can get up to, let's say, one foot. Uh, in height, but they are pretty hardy if you have them outside in, winter, in, in summer. Now what happens is that once you do have them outside, you can bring them in for overwinter storage. Because what you need to do is actually prune it down so it goes into dormancy. And as it goes into spring and your little shoots start coming up, do cut it down and let the foliage and the flower happen and it will bloom right up from spring, right up to the fall. So basically, if you're living in a colder climate, you could consider it as an annual. But here in Kenya, because we do have sunshine all the time, we do consider it as a perennial. But all in all, it is a very easy plant to look after and I will show you how to propagate it. So with propagation, I did pick some of these plants because I do have them in the garden. But with propagation, what I usually use is the stem. There are people I've seen that do use water propagation, but I just feel these propagations that I did were actually soil propagations and they worked just as well. So if I look at this plant here, what am I going to propagate in there is I am going to look for a stem with a node. I think I will go with this one because the stem, it looks stronger. And what I will do is just literally nip it here. So I'm going to also look at this one and I'm just going to, again, divide it here, just like that. And with this one, I'm going to cut a bit off here. And then what I'm going to do here is just remove some of this foliage. So what I'm actually going to propagate, propagate is this piece. So I'm going to keep it here. Another propagation here is I'm just going to snip it just there. I'm going to do this one. Just remove this one here. So that's my second. Now I look for more nodes. I actually prefer to do propagation using these nodes because they do get quite strong at the node when I do a propagation here. And again, I'm going to snip here, snip there. This one has rooting and I might put it back in. There we go. So I have four pieces here, which I'm going to propagate. And all I do is just simply take them and put this bit, which is the node, this fat bit there, and just 
place them in the soil like that and just cover it just like that then I'm taking this one again although it does have rooting and again you do see that the rooting is at these fat nodes so we're in the right direction so with this one I am just going to take it here and submerge it like that the soil is already moist I'd prepared it before and <clears throat> With this one again, I have my two nodes here and what I'll do in here is submerge it here, just underneath the soil, those fat nodes. So basically that is how I propagate my beautiful uh, baby breath Kilimanjaro, snow of Kilimanjaro. But let's have a look because these I had actually propagated and um, with this one I will put it in the hanging basket because I want that ball look but let's just look at the rooting on this one this is a bit older so I'm just going to empty it out go. this is a bit older and I'm going to crunch it opened And what I'd like to show you is when you do open it is those fatty nodes here and there where the nodes join that is where your rooting is coming from and this is a much I think this is maybe about a month old so basically it's picking up and again here's some rooting and I did exactly what I did, is those fatty nodes, <laughs> those <laughs> uh, bubbled nodes, is again, that's where your rooting is coming from. So if you look at this, there's one of the nodes there. And then again, here, where we had that fatty, <laughs> not fatty, we had that uh, round node and that's where the rooting is coming from. So once those are submerged, is you will get a rooting. So fellow gardeners, this is how you do a simple propagation of our euphobia, our, gr uh, our baby breath, our diamond frost, our diamond snow, or whatever you call it. But we will put the Latin name for you so you know the variety we're dealing with and do enjoy it, do have it planted in mass and have that lovely snow color in your garden or have them in hanging baskets because it always looks dramatic and it always gives you this airy, delicate feel in your garden. So don't forget to like and share and don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to press that notification button and do send me your comments on Facebook or on Instagram or even on our YouTube channel. And don't forget that we do upload our videos every Thursdays. And I wish you a happy, happy holiday. And thanks so much for joining us on this episode and happy holidays. And we'll see you next time. Bye.